was uh, the last one we had. They, uh, Smyrna and Philadelphia are the only two churches that God did not rebuke. Uh, he had only uh, good things to say, and uh, Smyrna was uh, during it was the martyr church. Uh, next, we come to Pergamos. Uh, the Pergamos meaning means marriage, and Pergamos is the uh, compromising church. And I don't have my. All right. Letter to the Church of Pergamos. Uh, that's mixed marriage. Did we do Pergamos last week? Mm -hmm. No, we should be in three. Okay. Yeah, I, went, I went backwards on my paperwork for some reason. I want right. to know you didn't do a week. <laughs> you don't like it. You've done two a week. Two churches. Yeah, I'm trying to do two churches a week. So we should be uh, in Thyatira, right? No. 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 In chapter three. Well, who am I talking to? Sardis. Sardis. Oh, my goodness. We've been gone to Sardis. All right. The letter to the church of Sardis, chapter 3, verse 1. That is awesome, man. We're further along than I thought. All right. Chapter 3, verse 1, Revelation. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Who is that? Jesus. Remember at the very beginning of Revelation, he talked about that he held the seven stars in his hands. Remember? Remember? Uh, Jesus says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art, and art dead. Be watchful and strength, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right. Now, right here, that there, there in verse 5, uh, we should get to it, but that right there in verse 5 is where a lot of churches believe that, well, if he says that he will not blot out his name, then he could blot out a person's name. So they use that as, in a sense, that they, a person could lose their salvation because he, Jesus could blot out their name. But if your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, it's written blood, and that, blood, and that name cannot be blotted out. That name uh, will not be blotted out. Okay, but anyway, let's back up here. I digress. Uh, I'm all over the place because I thought we were back. Well, back. All right. Thyatira, the continuing sacrifice from the church. Very good. Sardis. Sardis is the remnant. Uh, the remnant. Uh, um, uh, Thyatira was a church that was the, the governmental church. And, but there was a lot of people that come out of Thyatira uh, that, uh, that uh, they, they are the remnant. They are the ones that are left over. They are the ones that are still trying to carry on God's Word. But they're still doing it under a, a, a governmental, a, a laws in sense way. Um, this is during the Reformation, this time period of um, Sardis is during the Reformation. Anybody remember who might be, uh, might have been in the Reformation? A name? A certain name? It's a big name? Even a church is named after him? Or a, a religion? If you will. I guess. Right. Well, my Bible says it's Roman Caesar and Archbishop <coughs> worship. That was during the time period, but uh, that would have been more of the Thyatira uh, the Roman Catholicism would have been during Roman Caesar. This would have been the time that Luther, anybody ever heard of Martin Luther? Yes. John Calvin? This is the time period that these men uh, uh, would have been in church history. Uh, this would have been during 1517 to 1700 is what this church uh, time period represents. The location of this church, uh, it was a very wealthy 
city situated about 30 miles uh, south of Thyatira served as the capital of the province of Lydia. The, uh, the Lord of this church, we already said, the Lord of this church is Jesus. It talks about the seven, uh, the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Remember at the very beginning, chapter 1 there, he holds the seven stars in his hands. Um, and, and there's a, a very small praise here. There are a few names. Now, now think about this. Uh, if, if Jesus were to come in here today, I would hope and pray that he would say all of Jennings Creek, everybody in here is named as one that is in the remnant that, rem that is living for me, that is serving me, that, is, uh, uh, that I could call a Christian. But if Jesus come in and said, there's only a few of you here that I call my own, how sad would that be? How sad would it be that, 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 uh, that Jesus is saying that there's only a few, that there's a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. So, meaning, uh, they're, they're serving me and living for me to the best of their ability. Uh, hey, uh, if you uh, did something against your mom but you didn't realize, your, your mom wanted you to clean your room, but she didn't tell you to clean your room, and you didn't clean your room, she'd be upset that you didn't know you were supposed to clean your room, right? So you failed your mom, but unknowingly failed your mom. Does that make sense? Okay, now, God doesn't hold that against us if we fail Him unknowingly or um, mistakenly. But when we flat out spit in God's face and say, I, I, I'm not going to do that, or I'm going to do it my way, and then ask for forgiveness later, well, that's soiling the garment. Okay? My mom and dad used to tell me, well, I better go inside and change my clothes before I go outside and play. Because I'll, I'll soil my pants, my church clothes. I'll get them dirty. And if I were to get them dirty when we would, uh, before we left church, a lot of times we'd run outside, me and Mike Morrow would run outside and we would play and, and play football or whatever. And I'd, end up, I'd always, always end up falling, sliding, tackling somebody and getting my pants all messed up. And, and so I was constantly getting my tail busted <laughs> because I failed and, and, and because I soiled my garments. And Jesus here says that there's only a few of you that, that have not. There's only a few of you that still are wearing a white robe, a white garment that are living for me. And, it, and that's a very small uh, praise. That's a very, very small amount of praise. And, but the rebuke, thou hast the name that thou livest and art dead. You say you're a Christian. You don't live. You say you're a Christian, but do people know about it? And when 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 you tell people, say, "Well, I'm going to church Sunday," you go to church. When people say that, it, you, it, it ought to it ought to hurt you right here. It, it, well, yeah. What do you mean? You question I go to church? Well, by the things you've been talking about, or by the things you say, or whatever. It, People ought to know that you're a Christian and that, that there's no question. Don't even call that person on Sunday morning because they're going to be in church. It's going to go straight to boys now. Okay. And it, it should be Jesus is first. And they live their, their life uh, as a Christian. That's what Christian means is to be Christ-like. What, what is Christ-like? It's, it's everything God's Word says we want to live. We want to uh, be obedient to. We want to uh, praise God and let people know Jesus didn't hide Himself when He was on the earth. He never. Uh, the only, there was only one time that it says that Jesus slipped through the crowd, and that was because they they wanted to kill Him. <laughs> they wanted to take Him and stone Him, and His time was not up, so He slipped through the crowd to get away. But He never hid from anybody. He faced everything and everyone uh, head on. So we as Christians should let people know that we're a Christian. We should live that. We, we, we should say, well, we don't do those things. What do you mean you don't do that? You're too good? No. No, I'm a Christian. Oh, so now you're judging me because you're, oh, no, no, no. You, you do what you want to do. That's between you and God. But I don't do that because I'm a Christian. I don't uh, uh, talk like that because I'm a Christian. Oh, so I should? No, no, no. That's between you and God. There's a lot of people at work 
that they, they, they tell me, oh, sorry, sorry, Darren, I, I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, that's between you and God. They look at me real funny and say, you're the one has got to answer for it, not me. <laughs> right? but, but that's the thing. We've got to understand that we don't judge people because if they're unsaved, they're not held accountable to God's Word like we are. Okay? The unsaved are not held accountable to God's Word. They're held accountable of accepting Jesus or not when they die and go to heaven or hell. Okay? If they're a Christian, then they're held accountable to God's Word. But if they're unsaved, if they don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, they're not held accountable. Okay? But these people were. They were held accountable. And Jesus even said that, that you need to repent. Remember your name. Remember who you are. The command that He gives to the church is, is watch. What are they watching for? What should we all be watching for? Your first return and coming back. We should be watching for the Lord. Uh, how terrible would, would it be that, all, that I'm getting ready to say a word I shouldn't be saying and all of a sudden the Lord calls me home and it's going to be in the blink of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye, that's what it says. So I'm getting ready to say, uh, uh, and I say it right in front of Jesus. Right here. <laughs> how bad would that be? Or I'm getting ready to just do something I shouldn't be doing and all of a sudden I'm doing it right in front of Jesus because I don't think, I don't know if we'll be able to stop what we're doing. In an instant like that, I run. But how terrible would that be to face Jesus knowing what I just said or did? But he says, watch. Watch for the return because the return is imminent. It is going to come like a thief. Strengthen that which remains and is about to die. What, 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 what remains? The love of Christ. Living for Christ. Uh, that church was about to fall apart and go, go by the wayside. He says, watch and strengthen each other. Hold fast. Repent. If there's sin in your life, repent. Hold fast, meaning just don't give up. Keep living for the Lord. When you fail, repent. Get back on track and get, get back going. You fail, get up. Repent and get back going. You fail, repent, get up. Get, do whatever you got to do. There's nobody here perfect. We're all going to fail God one way or another, sometime or another, maybe not every day, but one day, probably once a week, maybe more, we're going to fail God. And when we do, we ask for forgiveness. But we've got to mean it right here. Because God knows our heart. All the saved are promised. All of those are promised. They're in the uh, latter part of verse 5. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and his angels. All those that are saved will receive a robe of white and we will be confessed before the holy angels of God. That's my child. God's going to say, that's my child. Why? Because we held fast. We watched. We repented. We lived. We tried our best. God knows we failed. God knows we're only human. God knows this flesh is weak. But all He asks is repent. Hold fast. Repent. Their name will never be blotted out of the book of life. So many people think that, that if, it, if Jesus says I won't blot it out means that it could be blotted out. So there's a lot of, 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 of religions out there, beliefs out there, that they think that you could lose your salvation. How sad would it be to think that I could mess up one time and lose my salvation? But to me, that's worse. Because now I've got to work hard to keep from failing God. To keep from losing my salvation. But that also means my salvation is up to me. Is that what the Bible says? Does Bible say that my salvation is up to me? Come on, talk to me. I know y'all worried about saying the wrong thing, but it's okay. <laughs> What's that? What you ask that to you? That's okay. Is it up to me to lose or to keep my salvation? No. No? Why? Because God's promise. God made the promise. I did See, when God made the promise with Abraham, He made a covenant with Abraham. Abraham made a covenant with Him. 
Israel had to hold, hold up their side and God had to hold up His side. God's going to hold up His side. But on the New Covenant, the New Testament, through Jesus Christ, His promise is to all those who believe. Period. All those who have faith in Jesus, that through Jesus you will receive and keep your salvation. Because He said that my Father has given me unto, given you unto my, into my hand and no man shall pluck them out of my hand. So if I could lose my salvation because of, of me failing, that means that I, a man, could pluck myself out of God's hand. Out of the hand of well, Jesus is God. What is about that, the people that you, you know people that seem to be so on fire from God? And key word. Key word. Seem to be. Now, do I believe people fall by the wayside? Yes, I do. The Bible talks about it. People that, that, that uh, are taken out early because they are no longer living for the Lord. The Bible talks about it. So yes, there are people that, that fall by the wayside, but they're still going to die and go to hell. Even by fire is what the Bible says. Okay? Meaning that God's going, to, God's going to test everything you've done, and the only thing that's going to get you to heaven is the blood of Jesus. Not what you did or didn't do. Okay? You can't lose your salvation because it's all up to God. <clears throat> Not up to me. Now, the thing is, is that person saved? Let's say, let's take Gerald. Gerald, you you from uh, when did you get saved? <clears throat> How old were you? Twelve. Okay. So let's say he was twelve years old, you got saved. All right? <laughs> His back. <laughs> 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 Someone talked to you and said, hey, look, uh, let's go up here and pray, and, and you'll be saved. So you go up. You don't even know what to say. Say, well, God, uh, uh, I don't know. They told me to come up here, and I'll be saved. All right, so now they told you, all right, since you went up here and you prayed, you're saved, okay? So you believe that you're saved because someone told you that you were saved. They took you out. They baptized you, and now you're saved, all right? So you live your life, and then about at age 30, you're like, I don't like this stuff anymore. I, I, I can't do what I want to do. I, I like to have, you know, a good time. And, and I'm going to go do my own thing. So now you done left your wife and uh, you're going on out and you're, you're running around on her and, and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, in our eyes, it would look like you lost your salvation because you no longer believe in God, no longer trust God, no longer taking care of your family because you want to do your thing. But the thing is, were you truly saved? I can't say. You didn't have it just all right. Right. Now, I can't truly say whether you were truly saved or not because that's between you and God. Only God knows whether a person is truly saved or not. But more than likely because of the situation I explained, he was never truly saved because he was told to say this, and then they told him he was saved. Done. There was never the conversion. Okay? That's exactly what happened to me, too. Okay. Now I didn't get into all this other stuff. We were going to take it around back and talk to you, but anyway. <laughs> so, but so, and that's the thing. There's a lot of people, especially as children, they're not taught correctly. They're not taught that you need to say these words you need to desire this. You need to want to. A lot of times parents push them along. Go on up there and pray with them. Go up there and, and oh, he's got saved. He's got my baby saved. Well, not necessarily. Because you didn't have a heart conversion. It was all mouth service. So th that, that in a sense, people would think you lost your salvation. But he really didn't. Okay? Now, there are people that get saved. I was saved when I was five years old. All right. I know I was saved. All right. I, I know for a fact. But I fell by the wayside. If you'd have known me 
20, how long? Yeah, make sure you get your years right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my years wrong Sunday. 27 plus years ago, you would have never thought I was saved. Okay? I know for a fact I was saved when I was five years old. But when I was 20, 20, well, probably 16 on up through to about 20, when was, how old was I when Tyler was born? 26? How old was I when Hayden was born? 29? About 30 years old? Hayden said, like, hey, I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't see the candles, though. No. <laughs> um, you, you, during that time, you would have thought, man, that man is not saved. He does not know God. does not know anything about God. Okay? And you would have thought, well, he lost his salvation and was never saved before. I know I'm saved. I fell by the wayside. I, I myself took myself to the wayside. Okay? What but the Lord brought me back. What about people that never come back? What's that? You came back. Yes. What about people that do that? that you God, takes, God takes them out early. Never come back. God takes them out early. Most of the time, God takes them out early. Uh, takes them on home. The, the premature death of those that would have had a longer life, but they were no longer serving God, and they were actually a more of a hindrance. Because, you know, I, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. And, uh, and I know I'm saved, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to kill somebody. Well, I, I, in my heart, I may think I am, <laughs> but the, the desire to kill or the desire to, to commit fornication or adultery against my wife uh, makes people question. And that right there is a question of whether or not that person was truly saved. Okay, Nowhere in the Bible does it say you can lose your salvation. Nowhere. Okay? And the Bible makes it clear that once saved, always saved. What's John 3.16? Say it with me. For God is so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have partial life. Wait a minute, what? I'm wrong. Are you sure? So if it's everlasting, everlasting means everlasting. So if a person is truly saved according to God's Word, and, and, and in my Bible, the, those letters are, those words are written in red. So that is said that it, that is the words of Jesus. If Jesus said that you're going to have everlasting life, then you're going to have everlasting life. Okay? So once saved, always saved. Uh, a, a lot of the, uh, or uh, I say a lot, some um, beliefs taught differently because they didn't want people to think they had free range. They didn't truly understand what grace is. Uh, the grace of God is that He'll let you go just like your own child. How many of us let our own child kind of go their own way a little bit, however they want to do for just a little bit, but eventually what happens? We call them down, we rain them in. Yeah. That never happens to you though, does it? Okay. She did she did the <laughs> Right. The little pat. Uh, mine was never a little pat. <laughs> that, that's the airplane swipe. Oh right. From out of nowhere. Yeah, from out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you know, yes. doesn't Paul, uh, Peter talk about those people was going to stumble blocks. Yes. For others. For others. Those that 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 would let's just take a, a pastor's for instance. Let's take Let's take um, Paul with it. Y'all know what's going on in, in, in the news. It's happened the past couple of weeks with Jerry Falwell Jr. And, and a lot of people look up to him because he's the, the chancellor of, of Liberty University. And and but the things that he's done, God was not going to allow him to keep going. But he's just a person. Exactly. They were, they, a lot of people look up to up him. Like and a lot of people look up to Pastors, preachers, uh, even co-workers look up to those of you that, that you work with that may be unsaved or just not strong in their faith. And you fail God, God's going to remove you because you're a stumbling block. You're holding them or causing them to sin because you yourself are now showing them that, well, if they can do this, I can do this. Well, they can do that, well, I can do that. That's the reason that I've heard people say that um, 
you got to be very careful. Let's just take uh, uh, drinking alcoholism. We're, we're way out of time. I know, guys. We're way out of time. But let's just take uh, someone that, that, that uh, 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 struggles with alcohol. And, and they go out and they say, Gerald, uh, you, we, I go out to eat with you. And let's say, I struggle with alcohol. And, and, but I know you're a Christian. You sit down you order a beer. Well, the Bible doesn't say you can't drink. An alcoholic beverage. It's the drunkard, the Bible says, not to be. Not to allow it to control you. But the problem is, the Apostle Paul makes it clear, that not to do anything that would cause your brother to follow faith. Or is it Peter? Peter. It says, you know, don't be the one that causes your brother to fail and causes him to go in, into the ditch. So, you know, setting a good example for him. Right. Right. So, so I look at Gerald, I'm like, well, he's a, I know he's a good Christian. So it must be okay to drink. So me being an alcoholic, I, I, I think, well, I'll drink one. But it, when I drink one, it turns into ten. But he drinks one. It's just a drink. It ain't no different than water to him or Pepsi or Coke. It's just a drink. So we got to be very careful that we don't become a stumbling block uh, and, and God takes those stumbling blocks out. Just like I said with Jerry Falwell, we see what happened to him. He became a stumbling block to the world that looked at him as the <laughs> chancellor, the, the president of a Christian college that the world, the whole world knows about. Don't and the stupidity that he does. Don't huh? you think it's hard though, like when you get to a position like he was in the realm of like the bigness of all of it? It would be very hard to stay humble yep. and to not, like, on a yacht, you know. It's just all... To get the, carried away. Yeah. Yeah, but he's held to a higher level. All Christians are held to a higher level. And we have to be very careful that we don't become that stumbling block, that we don't. But at the same time, we don't get carried away either. You know, it'd be easy for somebody to walk up to me and say, well, Darren, you're wearing shorts. I don't believe you should be wearing shorts in church. I don't know, but ladies like that, you're cool. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> but, but the thing is, at the same time, why not? Well, you know? some places are getting hung up on what you wear, but I don't think God... Like well, you it, should reverence we should reverence God. We should have we should have good, clean clothes covered. Do you know not, not the, that would cause someone to stumble in that sense of, of not being covered? But <laughs> but but we have to be you know we have to understand that nowhere in the Bible does it say what I can and can't wear. I'm just supposed to be covered. I'm supposed to look like a man. Don't I, look, I hope I look like a man. <laughs> I'm not supposed to look like a woman. All right? The Bible does make that clear. There's supposed to be that distinction between the two. But in all reality, it, it, you get with those that are very judgmental or governmental in their beliefs like that. Uh, tell them that, uh, uh, all right, according to God's Word, men, you're not supposed to wear pants. You're supposed to wear a robe with a girl with a sash holding everything up. So, in our reality, if we're going to do that, if we're going to go exactly what the Bible says, then let's do that. I, 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 I've been through that. I, I've been through a couple pastors and a church. I grew up in a church where men wore, wore pants, short sleeve shirt, <coughs> suit and tie on Sundays. Women could not wear, wear nothing but a dress. Some of you may have grown up in a church like that as well. And, 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 and to, to, to be judgmental on something like that, is wrong. But at the same time. You're caught up in a lot of that and you're forgetting the, the main reason. Right. It's great. All of that's man made. Yeah, All of that's man made. Well, yeah. the Bible had a lot of, you know, not wearing ornaments in your hair or something. Well, the, the plaiting of the hair, that's what the harlots did. So you were not to be plaiting the hair, which means, ladies, you can't. <laughs> You can't, you, you can't, you can't do the, 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 uh, the, the, the what, no, braiding. braiding, thank you, braiding, not the plaiting, but the braiding, uh, you, you can't wear earrings, you can't wear, uh, false eyelashes, you can't wear makeup, you know what Jay Vernon McGee said about makeup? Sometimes an old barn needs a little bit of paint. <laughs> <laughs> 
But nowhere in the Bible does it talk about stuff like this. And this is stuff that that, that is man-made and it's made up. So uh, good, good, good conversation tonight, guys. So, but anyway, we are we are way behind. Our time is up. Uh, what? Yeah, Dad, I got through Sardis. We got through Sardis. Did I, make, did, I fit, did I not finish with Sardis? Yeah, I guarantee us that year it's going to take. Hey, you, got uh, you mean end. like three? <laughs> <laughs> you got to the end of Sardis. I believe I got close to the end of Sardis. But, um, well, that way you wouldn't get too fed to Angela when she starts a revelation. Yeah. Too. See, you're doing this like so take notes and catch up. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. And, and just know that I will do my best to put it online, so if you need to go over what they teach and then come back and see what I teach them. Yeah. Uh, Text Misty on Wednesday morning. <laughs> it's a reminder to bring. Yeah, yeah you'll have to because that, I don't know how many people I've told them. We need to talk, tell Misty because I will forget. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to the Lord and work prayer and then we'll go home and eat us a bite for dinner. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for allowing us to uh, get into your word. Lord, there's a few things we talked about tonight that uh, might not necessarily have been part of a, uh, the book of Revelation, but Lord, uh, it's things that we need to learn and we need to know so that we are stronger in our faith, that we are stronger living uh, for You. Uh, Lord, uh, just even with uh, the losing our salvation, Father, I couldn't imagine living my life uh, in desperation of wonder, did, did I do something to fail You? And, and now I'm, I'm going to go to hell. Father, your word says that if I believe in you, if I have faith in you, if I just put my faith in Jesus, I will have eternal life. And your word says in John 5 that if I believe in Jesus, that I can believe in Jesus and know with it beyond a shadow of a doubt, to know that I will live with you forever and ever. Father, thank you for that. Thank you for that promise. Thank you for that love. That's unconditional love. That's grace and mercy that you bestow upon us. We don't deserve it, and yet you give it to us. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask that you'll be with your people this week. Love on them, bless them. Uh, just uh, give them a good rest of this week. Uh, Father, we, we look for those blessings that we know that can only be from you. And Father, if we stop taking time, we know that all blessings are where does my strength from? come from? It comes from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.